Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm back with another video and today's video is another segment from who is dot dot for Black History Month. So today's person we have is Maya Angelou. If any of y'all do not know who Maya Angelou is, I'm going to give y'all a few seconds to think about that. Do -do 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 did you figure out who she was? All right, I'm not going to hold it against you because I'm going to tell you who she was, okay? But if y'all watching this far, please make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn your post notifications. That way you'll be notified when I post. Comment down below if y'all like to see more of these, okay? And we're just going to get right into it. So, Maya Angelou was born Marguerite Annie Johnson, born April 4th, 1928. Yes, yes, yes. She was an American poet, singer, memorialist, and a civil rights activist. So she was around, around. Okay. She published several autobiographies, three books of essays, several books of poetry, and is credited with a list of plays, movies, and television shows spanning over 50 years. She received Dozens of awards and more than 50 honorary degrees. Degrees. 50. Some people barely have one. Whew. Yes, she's doing the thing. Angelou is best known for her series of seven autobiographies, which focused on her childhood and early adult experiences. Yes. The first is I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings in 1969 tells of her life up to the age of 17 and brought her international recognition and acclaim. Yes, yes, so she put herself on the map. She became a poet and writer after a series of occupations as a young adult, including fried cook, sex worker, whew, nightclub dancer, and performer. Mm -hmm. Cast member of the opera Porgy and Bess, Coordinator for the South Christian Leadership Conference and journalist in Egypt and Ghana during the decolonization of Africa. She was an actress, writer, director, and producer of plays, movies, and public television programs. She was around getting it in. Like, she was boss, boss. A boss, boss. Okay? She, she was on her P's and Q's. Okay, next we have, in 1982... She was named the first Reynolds Professor of America of American Studies at Wake Forest University in Winston-Salem, North Carolina. North Carolina, stand up! She was active in the Civil Rights Movement and worked with Martin Luther King Jr. And Malcolm X. Wow. Talk about somebody... Talking about somebody coming from the struggle. She, she, she was an all-around black American. And she was in everything. She dibbled and dabbled in this and that. Like, and still on, still doing all of that, she found time to do what she loved most. Which was write poetry. Like, But let's continue with these facts and inter information about this young Lady woman who I've known to love and admire to this day. Beginning in the 1990s, she made around 80 appearances a year on the lecture circuit, something she continued to do into her 80s. I am impressed by her. Like, in 1993, Angela recited her poem on the post of mourning at the first inaugural. Of Bill Clinton. Yes. Making her the first poet to make an inaugural re recitation since Robert Frost at the inauguration of John F. Kennedy in 1961. Now, that was a long time ago. With the publication of I Know Why the Cage Bird Sings, Angelo 
publicly discussed aspects of her personal life. She was respected as a spokesperson for black people and women. More power to the people. And her works have been considered a defense of black culture. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. And we're going to get into some of them if they let us get into some of them. Yes. Her works are widely used in schools and universities worldwide. Yes. Still I rise. Phenomenal woman. Just to name a few. Those are the most popular ones that I've known to this day. But there are plenty more others that she has out. And we're going to see, 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 see. Okay, so... Um, although attempts have been made to ban her books from some libraries, Angela's most celebrated works have been labeled as autobiography fiction, which is awesome. Great for Black History Month. But many critics consider them to be autobiographies. I mean, because it's her life, so it would be considered true, so where's the fiction in it? She made a deliberate attempt to challenge the common structure of the autobiography by critiquing, changing, and expanding the genre. Her books center on themes such as racism, still to this day, identity, family, and travel. Okay, this is going to be into her earlier life. So, Marguerite Annie Johnson was born in St. Louis, Missouri, April 4th, 1928, the second child of Bailey Johnson and a, a doorman and Navy dietitian, and Vivian Baxter Johnson, a nurse and car dealer. Angelo's older brother, Bailey Jr., nicknamed Marguerite Maya, derived from my or Maya's sister. When Angelo was three and her brother was four, her, their parents' calamitous marriage ended and their father sent them to Stamps, Arkansas, alone by train. They're four and three years old. What the heck? You mean tell me nobody couldn't, nobody, somebody would have stole them? Like, on a train by themselves. They're young. All right, let's continue. Your girl is, mm. Wow. To live with their paternal grandmother, Andy, Annie Henderson, and an astonishing exception to the harsh economics of African Americans of the time, Angelo's grandmother pro prospered financially during the Great Depression and World War II because of the general store she owned so needed basic commodities and because she made wise and honest investments. Go ahead, Grandma. Go ahead, Grandma. <laughs> Four years later, the children's father came to Stamps without warning. What? How are you just going to come up and surprise people? Like, Anne returned them to their mother care in St. Louis. At the age of eight, while living with her mother, Angelo was sexually assaulted, sexually abused, and raped by her mother's boyfriend. <sighs> wow. A man named Freeman. She told her brother, who told the rest of the family, Freeman was found guilty and was jailed for a day for raping a child one day. Oh, you best believe we going to war if that was to ever happened to my child. We going to be fighting. You going to be underneath the jail. And I'm probably going to be in the jail. <laughs> Took. You ain't getting enough scot-free, baby. But anyways, um, four days after his release, he was, he was murdered, probably by her own goose. I believe it. It would have happened that way anyway. Hmm. Angelo became mute and, um, for almost five years. So around the age, like, she was about to turn 14, because from eight years old to, yeah, five years of being a mute. Wow. Believing as she stated, I thought my voice killed him. I killed that man. Because I told him his name. No, you did what was right to protect your health and and and, and everybody else. Like, but as a child, kids do feel like they're the cause for stuff and why they happen. No, that was God's will and way saying, "I got your back, boo. I got you, and we gonna handle it." And it was it handled. <laughs> Moving along, and then. 
She thought she would never speak again because my voice would kill anyone. According to Marcia Ann Galepsi and her colleagues who wrote a biography about her, it was during this period of silence where Angela developed her extraordinary memory for love of books and literature and her ability to listen to observe the world around her. Shortly after Freeman's mother murdered, Angela and her brother were sent back to the grandmother. Angela credits a teacher and friend of hers, Mrs. Bertha Flowers, with helping her speak again. Flowers introduced her to authors like Charles Dickens, William Shakespeare, Edgar Allan Poe, Douglas Johnson, James Weldon Johnson. Yes, I remember all of them artists too. Authors too. Like, what? Mm-mm-mm. Authors who will affect her life and career as a, as a black female artist like Frances Harper, Anne Spencer, and Jessie Fawcett. Now, I have not heard of those, and I'm definitely going to check them out for Black History Month and get my little knowledge on. When Angela was 14, she and her brother moved in with their mother once again. The back and forth, I know they must have been tired of that inconsistency. Who has since moved to Oakland, California. During World War II, Angela attended the California Labor School. At the age 16, she began became the first black female cable car conductor. Oh, so she was working on the trains at 16, so she got a job, y'all. In San Francisco, she wanted the job badly, admiring the uniforms of the operator so much so that her mother referred to her as her dream job. Her mother encouraged her to pursue the position, but warned her that she would need to arrive early and work harder than others. In 2014, Angela received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the conference of minority transportation officials as part of a session build women who move the nation a and that we do okay maya angela was putting it on for us black women yes yes three weeks after completing school at the age of 17 she gave birth to her son clyde who later changed his name to guy johnson okay all right in 1951 Angelo married Tosh Angelos, a Greek electrician, former sailor, and an expiring musician despite the cond condemnation of interracial relationships at the time and the disapproval of her mother. Wow, all that stuff was going on back then. And some of that stuff still goes on to this day. It's so crazy how much history is repeating itself in the newer generation. Okay, she took modern dance classes during the time and met dancers and choreographers. Alvin Ailey. Yes! Shout out to Alvin Ailey. They have a school here in New York, too. And Ruth Beckford. Ailey and Angela formed a dance team called themselves Al and Rita and performed modern dance at fraternal black organizations throughout San Francisco but never became successful. As long as you're having fun doing what you're doing, that's all you need. Angelo, her new husband, and her son moved to New York City. Ah, New York stand up. Like, oh my God. Like, oh. So she could study African dance with the Trinidad dancer Pearl Primus, but they returned to San Francisco a year later. After, after Angelo's marriage ended in 1954, she danced professionally in clubs around San Francisco, including the nightclub The Purple Onion, hmm, where she sang and danced calypso music. Up until that point, she went by the name of Marguerite Johnson or Rita, but at a strong suggestion of her manager's supporters at the Purple Onion, she changed her professional name to Maya Angelou. Aww. Her nickname and former marriage surname. It was a distinctive name that set her apart and captured the feel of her calypso dance performances. Oh my God, it's crazy how people suggest a change and you go for it and it, it puts you through the puts you through the roof and over the map like, I am truly impressed. Like, oh my gosh, she was. Mm, mm, mm. Yes, during the 1954 and 1955, Angela toured Europe with a production of the opera Porgy and Bess. She became her practice began her practice of learning the language of every country she visited. Wow. And in a few years, she gained proficiency in several languages. In 1957, riding on the popularity of Calypso, Angela recorded her first album, Miss Calypso. Hey, 
which was reissued as a CD in 1996. I don't know why I didn't see that at that time, but then again, I was only about 10 years old, so maybe that's why. She appeared in an off-Broadway review that inspired the film Calypso Heatwave, in which Angelo sang and performed in her own composition. Now, I've probably seen that movie because I remember her in a couple of movies when she, in her older days. She also met novelist John Oliver Killens in 1959 and at his urgent move to New York, New York to concentrate on her writing career. She joined the Harlem Writers Guild, aim, where she met several major African-American authors, including John Henry Clark, Rosa Guy, Paul Marshall, and Julian Mayfield, and was published for the first time in 1960 after meeting the civil rights leader Martin Luther King. What? Ooh. And hearing him speak, she and Killens organized a legendary cabaret for freedom to benefit the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. And she was named the Northern Co Northern Corridor Coordinator. According to the scholar Lyman Hagen, her contribution to civil rights as a fundraiser and SCLC organizer was successful and intimately effective. Angela also began her pro-Castro and anti-apartheid activism during this time. So she was a boss boss making boss moves. Oh my god, I am so proud of her. And I've never met her day in my life. Like, reading back on how much she's progressed from what happened to her when she was a young kid to now, it's just impressive. It's phenomenal. It's just like this is what she was meant for, Maya Angelou. Oh, oh my God. And she spoke for Barack Obama in 2018. 20, 2008. I'm going to say 2018. Mm -mm -mm. Like, oh my gosh. She is so, oh my God, so amazing. Oh my gosh. Let's bring it back to her works. And then we're going to talk about her death. And then that's it because we don't want this video to be too long okay angelo wrote a total of seven autobiographies according to scholar mary jane lupton angelo's third biography singer and swinging and getting married like christmas marked the first time a well-known african-american autobiographer has written a third volume about her life her books stretch over time and place from arkansas to africa and back to the U.S. and takes place from the beginning of World War II to the assassination of Martin Luther King Jr. She published her seventh autobiography, Mom and Me and Mom, in 2013 at the age of 85. Oh, yes, she was working, working. Critics have tended to judge Angela Subquint's autobiographies in the light of the first, with Cage Bird receiving the highest praise. Angela wrote five collections of essays, which writer Hilton Alas called her wisdom books. And homilies struck together with autobiographical text. Angelo used the same editor throughout her writing career, Robert Loomis, an executive editor at Random House. Okay, Random House been around for a long time. He retired in 2011 and has been called one of the publishing Hall of Fame editors. That's what's up. Angelo said regarding Loomis, we have a relationship that kind of famous among publishers. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so beautiful. Here's one of the quotes she said. All my work, my life, everything I do is about survival. Not just bare, awful, plodding survival, but survival with grace and faith. While one may encounter many defeats, one must, one must not be defeated. Maya Angelou. Go ahead, girl. Angela long extensive career and including poetry plays, screenplays for television and film, directing, acting, and speaking public speaking. She was a prolific writer of poetry. Her volume Just Give Me a Little Just Give Me a Cool Drink of Water for I'll Die was nominated for the Postal Prize. And she was chosen by US President Bill Clinton to recite her poem on the post of the of the morning during his inauguration. Angela's successful acting career included roles in numerous plays, films, televisions, roots, screenplays, Georgia, Georgia was her first original script by a black woman to produce, and she was the first American African American woman to direct a major motion picture down on the Delta. Oh my god, I love that movie. Like, oh my god, I love that movie to this day. Oh my gosh. Ooh, 
Ooh. All right, let's see. So, mm. okay. Angelo died on the morning of May 28th, 2014. That was, it was about to be six years. Mm. May God rest her soul. She was found by her nurse. Although Angela had reportedly been in poor health and had canceled recent scheduled appearances, she was working on another book. Aww. An autobiography about her experience with national world leaders. During her memorial service at Wake Forest University, her son, Guy, stated that despite being in constant pain due to her dancing career and respiratory failure, she wrote four books during the last 10 years of her life. He says she left this mortal plan with no loss of acuity and no loss of comprehension. So despite through everything she's been through, she was still able to write, which was what she loved the most. Oh, And we're going to close this out with a poem. <laughs> we're going to do one of her famous poems. Still I rise. But Maya Angelo, and we're gonna close it out. Oh. All right, enough of that. Okay, Still I Rise by Maya Angelo. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may try t try me in the very dirt, but still, like this, I rise. Does my sassiness upset you? Why are you beset with gloom? Because I walk like I've got oil swells pumping in my living room. Just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides, just like hope springing high, still I rise. Did you want me, did you want me to see me broken? Bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops weakened by my soulful cries. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Cause I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. You may shoot me down with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hurt hatefulness, but still like air, I rise. Does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? Let them know, sis. <laughs> Out of the huts of history, shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I am a black ocean, leaping wide, welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. Leaving behind nights of terror, fear and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wonderfulest, clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave, I am the dream and hope of the slave. I rise, I rise. I rise. Okay. All right, we got to do one more, and then we're going to close this out. Ooh. We got a phenomenal woman. All right, this is the last one, and we're going to call it a quits. Okay. Last one, and we're done. Phenomenal Woman by Maya Angelou. Pretty woman, wonder where my secret lies. I'm not cute or built to suit a fashion model size. But when I start to tell them, they think I'm telling lies. I say, it's in the reach of my arms, the span of my hips, the stride of my steps, the curl in my lips. I'm a woman, phenomenally, phenomenal woman. That's me. I walk into a room just as cool as you, as you please, and to a man, that fellow stand or fall down on, his, on their knees. Then they swarm around me, a hive of honeybees, I say. It's the fire in my eyes, the flash of my teeth, the swing in my waist, the joy in my feet. I'm a woman, phenomenally. 
phenomenal woman. That's me. Men themselves have wondered what they see in me. They tried so much, but they can't touch my inner mystery. Mm -hmm. When I try to show them, they say they still can't see. I say it's in the arch of my back, the sun of my smile, the ride of my breast, the grace of my style. I'm a woman. Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. Now you understand just why my head's not bowed. I don't shout or jump about or have to talk real loud. When you see me passing, it's all to make you proud, I say. It's in the click of my heels, the bend of my hair, the palm of my hand, the need for my care, because I'm a woman. Phenomenally. Phenomenal woman. That's me. And there you guys have it, Maya Angelou, Black History Month, next person. So guys, if y'all like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. If you didn't, please give it a big thumbs down. The choice is yours. Comment down below if y'all would like to see more of these, because trust me, I got a whole bunch more in store. Um, Hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, that way you'll be notified when I post. And until next time, we are out of here. Peace. Don't tell me I can have it because I get it myself. I'm trying to sell limits, I'm not with it.